Mundaka Upanishad started <clears throat> with the Lord Brahma, the creator of the universe, giving the knowledge, imparted the knowledge to his eldest son, Atharvan. Brahma Devanam Prathama Sambhabhuva Vishwasya Karta, the creator of universe, Bhuvanasya Gopta, he was a, he's a protector and the creator. Sabrahma Vidyam, Sarva Vidya Pratishtam, Atharvaya, Jeshta Putraya Praha. Jeshta Putraya means the eldest son, Atharvan, <clears throat> was given. And in the second mantra, Atharvaneyam, Pravadeta Brahma, Atharvatam, Purovaga, Changire, Brahma Vidyam. So, Bharadvajaya Satyavahaya Praha. Bharadvajo Angirase Paravara. So, the knowledge of Brahman. <clears throat> Can we show Mantra Tuma? So, the knowledge of Brahman, <clears throat> Brahma Vidya. So, the knowledge of Brahman that Brahma imparted to Atharvan. What did Atharvan do? Atharvan passed that to Angira in the olden times, in the days of your Pura. Pura means in the olden times, in the days of your. What did Atharvan do? Atharvan passed it to Angira. Angira taught it to Satyavaha, a descendant of the Bharadvaja, Bharadvaja dynasty. The descendant of Bharadvaja later taught it in succession to Angirasa. Now, what is uh, evident from this Brahma giving to Atharvan, Atharvan giving to Angira, Angira giving to Satyavaha? And in the next mantra, what did Satyavaha do? Satyavaha gave it to Shaunaka. Shaunaka is the, we qualified him, as the text qualifies him as the famous householder. Now, the Angira is the, the teacher is the guru in the text. So we are getting a, an idea into the lineage of how Angira got the knowledge. Angira got it from Atharvan. Atharvan got it from Lord Brahma. So what is evident here is the, the tradition of the Guru Shishya Parampara. The preceptor disciple lineage. So it was the time where there was enormous reverence, a great reverence, tremendous reverence to this parampara, to this lineage. So the gurus were adored, were respected, and the knowledge imparted by them was imbibed. So 
as all texts, the spiritual gurus pay obeisance to their gurus. So here also you find that the Angiras had great reverence to this tradition. So he is referring to that tradition, the lineage, how the knowledge was passed on to him. So they were never unmindful of the, the contributions or sacrifices of their gurus. So when we talk of the Guru Shishya Parampara, it is just one means of acquiring knowledge as we learn that there are four ways of acquiring knowledge. One is through Pratyaksha, direct perception. Second is through Anumana, you infer. Four, third is through Upama, is through comparison. And the fourth is through Agami, through tradition. So the four means of acquiring knowledge and tradition is one such means. So it just tells us the importance of this Guru Shishya Parampara. And what we should do is try and preserve this great Parampara. Now, when a, a Guru realizes, he passes it on, not in information, but a, a guru should pass on his wisdom to his shishyas. If he's enlightened, his job is not done until he pulls one person out of that maya. His job is not done until one person is evolved, it means one person is totally realized. Then his job is done. And it's a humongous task for the guru who has realized to make another person bring him out of this delusion and attain realization. That is the obligation, only obligation a guru has to bring the other person out of that. He can do that much. But in the company, in the association of the Guru, what does it take for the student to attain realization is almost an impossible task. Almost impossible. I don't want to sound pessimistic, but it is it's such a demanding, such a uphill task to attain moksha. So for a, a student to attain moksha, to carry on the parampara. So the guru gives to the shishya. The shishya, what does the shishya go through? The shishya goes through extraordinary uh, effort. There's extraordinary commitment, extraordinary detachment, extraordinary tapas unless and until the trademark of a shishya is to put in extraordinary detachment. The shishya must be so detached to everything in the world and must be only be interested in this pursuit. That is when it is possible that the shishya can do justice to the teachings of the guru. When you say detachment, the shishya would have no other interest. There is no interest in uplifting the society. There is no interest in reforming the society. There is no interest in nothing. Only interest is <clears throat> moksha, moksha, moksha. I want to get to the self. There is nothing else that interests him because from their standpoint, everything else is waste of time, waste of energy. <clears throat> So the kind of detachment, now you all will be able to get a taste. You all have tasted it as you have got associated seriously with the knowledge. Have you all not kept away from certain activities which you find were very entertaining, you find very legitimate, 
very much a role as a householder you say as a householder i have certain duties and responsibilities i have certain obligations and so on and so forth then you you carry them out but as time passed have you not kept away from them understanding the futility in it you just have to intensify them to a to a point of absurdity and that is tapas that is detachment so a uh, shishya has to put in that extraordinary detachment extraordinary tapas and then there gets a chance that shishya realizes the self and then what does he do he passes it on so this guru shishya parampara has been held very high throughout the shastras in fact if you recall in the fourth chapter of the gita the very text of the fourth chapter starts with this reference to uh, the same tradition he says imam vivasvate yogam proktavan aham avyayam vivasvan manave praha manurikshva kame bravit i gave it to vivasvan vivasvan gave it to manu manu gave it to ikshvaku now these may be the terms you may not understand you may not be able to relate to but they are talking their times you know how it existed and why is it that you don't hear of the today's times the second verse he says evam parampara praptam imam rajarshiyo vidu sakale neha mahata yogo nashta parantapa arjuna krishna is saying to arjuna this parampara evam parampara praptam imam rajarshiyo vidu this parampara brought this knowledge to where this raja rishi knew it sakale neha mahata yogo nashta parantapa as time passed on there was a decline of this parampara and the raja rishi is also did not know it so the decline of parampara the first where rishis they had it they upheld it they carried on they passed on and as time passed on there was a decline towards this parampara to this knowledge people were not as dedicated to this attainment of the goal so what happened obviously there was a decline so from raja oh, sorry from rishihi it became raja rishihi first they were only sages then it came to a point they are only royal sages and then came to a point they are only royalty the element of sage completely disappeared from lives of people means there was a time the wisdom was in its purest form then wisdom got adulterated it became applied philosophy then there is no philosophy no wisdom at all today you will be surprised if there is any wisdom in any household no wisdom even gurukuls have no wisdom so what household is so there is a great reference to that parampara here and there is a reference to how perhaps this parampara was declined as of said guru of the text is angira and this is only the backdrop and then we get into the actual text as it where it starts begins with a question in the third mantra it's so evident that how the traditional classroom is set up where a student goes and asks the question and the master is just answering satisfying the students curiosity and you will be amazed by what is the caliber of the student here 
because of the words and the choice of words and the question he frames you know what's the caliber of the student mm -hmm.